Hello there and welcome to part 3 of the Peepup 6724 valve build series. This is kind of a standalone video where I talk about spill port timing and setting up an adjustable pump gear, but it's also applicable to the whole build where I'm going to be talking about different timing methods, what timing might be best for your combination, and kind of showing you how it kind of all works going on inside here as well. Um, before I continue though, if you like this type of content, please consider subscribing to the channel. And at the time, I'm at 7,000. Thank you guys very much. And if it's higher when you're watching it, then that means guys like you really appreciate this content. I appreciate you watching. Anyways, thank you uh, again. And let's dig into it. I've got two P-pumps here. I'm going to talk about some different stuff and kind of show you how, what's going on. Okay, here's the P-pump. I've got uh, one with the back governor housing off of it. And I've got a one laying on the side here. When you're doing a timing on a P-pump, the common method, if you're like not really doing any sort of performance, is you want to pin the camshaft or put the engine at top dead center. And then on the side of the pump here, there's a little slot. And you can see just inside there that there's a little flat blade kind of thing. And oh, you can see it good now. Uh, when that's lined up, this pump is at its pin timing. And whatever the data card for this pump is tells you what the timing is. So I'm going to find a data card here. Well, I can't find a data card, so I'm going to put one on the screen here. But the data card, uh, given that you have the original pump on the engine, is going to tell you what the timing is. And then from there, if you have the pump pinned and the uh, cam on the engine pinned, then whatever that data card timing is, is what your timing is going to be at if you were to just tighten the nut and the gear and set it there. So this is a 160 pump, so it's going to be, I believe, 12 and a half degrees. And if I wanted to advance it, then I would bar the engine counterclockwise and I'd have either a degree, degree wheel on the balancer or I'd measure the circumference of the balancer and divide it by 360 degrees. And you can figure out the uh, kind of how many thousands of an inch it takes per degree in the balancer. It's not the most ideal method, but it works and I've done it. My dad calls it the wheel of fortune timing because it's not the precise method, but it gets it, gets it done. Um, the next method is gonna be using a dial indicator and I don't have this whole setup here, but you remove the number one delivery valve holder and you put a dial indicator in there and then there's a plunger inside the pump that goes up and down and you can then see what the uh, kind of plunger lift is and I guess there's a data card and however much like lift you are or whatever kind of tells like where the plunger is which this isn't it's a better method than doing it off of just barring the engine over and using the balancer however the problem is if you have a pump that's being set up differently with a different pump cam or you know be modified then the numbers can kind of be a little bit off and this is the case with my Shide Lightning 13 mil P pump that I had where I didn't really know what the pin timing was set to. I imagine it was zero degrees because that's what they said, but you never know. So the pump is in the engine right now and I'm filming this after having installed it all and getting the engine running uh, because I lost my original fr front first clips. Um, so I didn't do the spill port or the, the dial indicator timing because uh, I don't know what the cam is in my pump. So the last method, which was actually my first time trying it, and I'm a believer that is the best method, is doing the spill port timing method. And all you're going to need is, this is an M14 by 1.5 plug. I believe it's actually the same plug from the side of the pump here. This is just one spare I had. But you'll need that, and then you'll need another one, so you need two of them. And then I just drilled the center of it out to fit a 1.8 MPT uh, Schrader valve. And then you'll see in the later clips, I have it rigged up where one is in one of the supply ports and one is in one of the uh, returns to cap it off. And you're going to put some air to it, bar it over. And uh, the reason I picked this method is because it gives you the absolute zero like start of injection. And when you couple that with a adjustable timing gear, you have a like marked um, point on the timing gear that... Uh, you can kind of go off. So pump's going to be pinned to zero. Timing gear is going to be at zero. You move the slot. It's two degrees. It's 100% accurate. It's a much better method. You can still do it without having a timing gear, but then you're going to kind of run into some of the inaccuracy of using the uh, harmonic balancer as your uh, degree wheel. Um, another little kind of thing that's neat while I have this pump here is with the timing slot pin. Oh, 
watch that. It's the back of the pump. This is your governor assembly. This is where the springs are. And that's that little indicator thing. And one trouble with relying on that is if some monkey along the way bent this uh, out, of, out of whack, it can be off. Or even what you think your eyeball is lined up with the center of the hole here could be off like a couple degrees. So you could set your engine at 18 degrees and it could be at 21 or it could actually be at 13. So it's another um, perk of doing it with the spool port timing method. Um, procedure. It's important to note the basic operating principles of the injection pump at this point. The following sequence of plunger lift and retraction illustrates the pumping action for moving fuel from the gallery to the engine cylinder. Once you have the delivery valve holder off, you're going to be seeing something like this. The delivery valve is going to be inside there. You're going to want to use a very expensive magnet or any magnet really. Pull the delivery valve out and then drop the holder back inside there like so. And then take your delivery valve holder, which in this case I have a special little one I made so I can fit my dial indicator inside it. Screw it in there and just lightly tighten it down. Then that has the delivery valve snug in there. So you're gonna to wanna to put your tire fill to the Schrader valve and you should be only getting air out of here. Unless you lucked out and you're already in position here. But I'm gonna place this rag right here. So when I press air, you have a better idea outside of just noise as to what it's doing here. Okay, so right now it's moving quite a bit of air and I know I'm not at the port closure. So I'm going to move the wrench here. You can hear the tone change. It's not moving up as much. A little bit. That little bit there. It is putting like 120 PSI to it. So that's port closure right there. So what I'll do is I'll move it back. So right now I can just, just hear it. It's moving a little bit more. Let's go. Come on. Just a hair. There. And that's true start of injection on the injection pump here. So with the cam, oh, sorry, with the engine at top dead center and the pump now at spill port in start of injection, if we were to just tighten the gear and run this right now, this is at zero degrees of timing. Run like complete arse and it'd be a smoky mess. We're going to come over to the front and talk about the gear. So talking about the gear, they are two-piece construction. This particular model, because there's a couple little different variants, has these multiple holes around it and then some larger slots around here. So I have the inner gear bolted, bolted on. You're going to want to do that first. It's 144 foot-pounds as factory spec. You want to probably go to 165 foot-pounds to make sure the slap shaft does not slip. You want to make sure that you brake clean the shaft and the inner part of the gear as well when you do this. Um, for if you're setting it up like this, you're not going to be able to get to 144 foot-pounds uh, without having the gear on in the engine uh, altogether. So you can just snug it up and then that's good enough to start for now. I'm going to put the gear on and going to want these holes for the larger bolts on the far left side of the slot here. That'll give you the greatest range of advance. Now you'll find the hole in which this smaller one fits into. And that is your zero degree timing. Every hole after that is two degrees. So two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. 18 is where I'd like to start as this is a pretty rank setup with a 13 mil P pump. And I know 18 sounds extremely mild, but I'd like to start low, see how the engine reacts and uh, break it in. And then later on, I'll start adding two degrees at a time and I'll see how the engine responds to that. Eventually you're gonna hit a point where you'll hit diminishing gains, where after you advance it to a certain point, either it gets grumpy, you lose low end, it gets smoky, um, but it's always good to start off low and be safe with things. So you're gonna take your wrench, shine a nice light on it. And you're gonna to wanna to turn until you can see a hole that lines up. So right now, right there hole lines up. It's at 18 degrees now. 
which I believe these are advertised as having about 40 degrees of sweep. Counting the holes, I think it's about 34. And that puts us right in the middle of the gear. So you know you're doing pretty good for uh, your math and everything like that. I'm gonna tighten this up, put the other bolts in, tighten that down, and she's set at 18 degrees. And then every, every time you wanna advance it past that, all you have to do is just remove it, fold it over a little bit, fit in the next slot. Super easy, we really like this thing. With all the bolts in there, you can use a 316 Allen key and set your torque wrench to 45 foot pounds and go in a circle, kind of like you're doing a wheel bolts. You can, it's optional, but you can put some blue Loctite or red Loctite on these. I use red because it's all I got. And I have this bottle that's probably, man, it has to be at least 20 years old. <laughs> and it's a, I call it the unlimited Loctite bottle, but uh, blue is probably a little bit safer, but the red's been working good for me for years. Um, as for the little baby guy, I don't really know what the torque is on him, but I'm going to say it's the German spec, which is guten tight. Uh, don't go too crazy on it though. Uh, use your internal built-in torque wrench here. With that all in, you can put your torque wrench on here and torque it to 144, 150, 160, whatever you prefer. Something I did di a little different here is I put some basically ARP Molly lube on the thread of the shaft and the bottom side of the nut. And I think that'll get you a more true torque as if you go in totally dry, what would be 140 foot, foot pounds may not put the actual proper clamping load on things. And if you've ever slipped timing, you hate doing it and you never want to do it again. It is a pain in the ass. So uh, with the adjustable timing gear, I don't figure that this center is ever going to come off. I might even just sell the pump with the adjustable timing gear still bolted to it and the next guy can deal with it. You can now begin removing the Schrader valve and the other plug and then put your delivery valve holder back on and it is torqued to 85 foot pounds. Since you've watched this far, I'm gonna leave you with a cool little bit of information for the future of the build here. Um, while I am running a 13 mil Shide Lightning P pump and it's gonna be uh, capable of enough fuel for what I'm doing, the Evolution is this H1000 pump or RP29. It's off a like 21 liter V12 mining engine and this is for one bank of it. So it has another bank pump. Um, these put out about the same amount of fuel as a 13 mil P pump do, but they inject close to common rail injection pressures like 33,000 PSI. They have dynamic timing and they have electronically controlled racks. So I can set a fully programmable uh, map such as like, okay, uh, two step, set the limiter to this, retard timing, um, Lots of really cool stuff. This is kind of like if you took a VP44 and a P-Pump and they had a baby and then you inject it full of steroids. This is what this, this thing is. This is the H1000. So I'll be using this with a Balder Control Systems DSL-1. And my friend Zach Urban has been able to give me all the adapters and stuff to run this pump. So uh, make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss out on that. And uh, yeah, I uh, hope you guys will think this is going to be really cool. It's just, you can see, it's just an absolute monster. But uh, it's actually not too bad to adapt over. So, uh, anyways, thanks for watching the video, and uh, hope to see you in another one.